Okay, so we're looking now at the um, story of the tax revolt of Beit Sahur, which is very um, interesting and I don't know how well known, so I'm just presenting it here and, um, and I'm pointing out to some resources about this really uh, very interesting history, which certainly falls into the category of non-violence um, um, and civil disobedience, I would say. So uh, Bet Sahur is a small village, mainly of Christian, um, of, the, of Christian population, 12,000 people, um, very close to Bethlehem. And um, this is a um, rather educated um, section of um, society with university degrees and rather uh, well off um, too. Um, the, in 1989, the villagers engaged in a six-week uh, civil disobedience campaign that started with returning uh, IDs or burning Israeli IDs in public and refusing to pay taxes to the Israeli authorities seen as a means to support the uh, very occupation that was oppressing them. So um, it started with uh, a civil disobedience, as I said, and it started with the idea of um, a home economy, meaning that uh, um, the wealthier among the Bet Sahurians would uh, lead a more austere, austere life, and the others would um, set up um, a number of instruments to become self reliant and among them, you would have uh, vegetable growth on the one hand, and the very special story of um, their um, um, of buying um, 18 cows so that they would become self-sufficient uh, with milk and cheese production. Um, I'll return to the question of the 18 cows later on. Um, the, the Israeli authorities clearly began a campaign to crash the tax resistance uh, and placed a uh, the town under siege, and at the same time it confiscated um, private and commercial property um, and arrested uh, many of the Bet uh, Sahurians. And the curfew lasted actually for 45 um, days. In the last days of the raid, of the arrests raid, um, there was a resolution introduced at the UN calling upon Israel to stop the tax raids and return the confiscated goods um, that was vetoed uh, at the very last minute by the U.S., despite the fact that actually the main slogan of the Betzahurian, uh, the Betzahurian's um, disobedience campaign was no taxation without um, representation. Um, there is no, not that I could find at least, no uh, book written on the memory of this um, of this um, s civilian uh, civil disobedience campaign, which actually worked uh, well in the sense that um, the IDF was unable to have taxes paid um, and only supplied with the confiscation of private goods. But uh, what I would like to point out um, for, for your enjoyment, actually, if you're interested in this, is uh, a movie that was um, released, uh, I think, in 2014, which is called The Wanted 18, which is the story of these 18 cows um, that were meant to uh, help Palestinians become self-sufficient in the production of cheese and milk, uh, but that um, became uh, an issue of national security with the Israeli army chasing these um, 18 cows and uh, looking for them in the area of Bet Sahur. I will not tell you how it ends, but I strongly encourage you to um, search and look, uh, look out for this uh, movie. Movie. Um, but I'm also, um, uh, I've, I've pasted in your, uh, in your uh, slides um, an article, which is an interview with um, the pharmacist Elias Rishmawi, um, and you can um, take your time um, and read it. I'm going to um, of course, to, uh, to um, move on the slides so that the presentation can finish, but I'm sure you will be able to stop um, as I'm speaking and, um, and you can read through. Um, only while this first slide, um, you can read the two columns together. In the next one, um, you should read the first column 
then move on to the next slide where you will read column one and two. And then unfortunately, you have to go back to the second column here. And then finally, again, back to the last one. I'm sorry, but I had to cut the article because it was clearly too long to fit in a slide. So I think that this um, interview stands as a very uh, precise testimony of what the siege of Betzahur meant and uh, the, um, the, the perspectives, uh, how the uh, Betzahurians saw the perspectives for the future. And so I'll leave you with this material, and um, we'll be talking about, again about Palestinian violent or non-violent resistance uh, at the very end of this unit, of this week, uh, with the Second Intifada. Thank you very much. See you there.